Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Intro to Swift. In this episode, we are going to look at classes, inheritance, and extensions. I come into this video assuming that you already know uh, classes and inheritance. It's pretty much the same in Swift as it is in any other language, Java, PHP, any language that has inheritance, uh, Swift is going to be pretty similar. This is going to be not too deep down into it. Um, it's just going to be like a general overview. Uh, but again, the whole intro to Swift uh, course is just explaining the Swift version of things that you already know, as well as some Swift exclusives like extensions, which we will see. Those are pretty cool. So we'll begin inheritance, or sorry, we'll begin classes by writing a class that represents a person. Uh, the attributes about a person that we care about are the name of the person and the age of the person. Those are the two things that we want to know. We can store them in a class so that we can essentially, with a class, have uh, multiple instances of it. So we can say for each person that we have, we can create one instance of the person class and it would store their particular data. So if you think about it, if you have five people line up and you can figure out their names and ages, we can have five different, not versions of the class, but instances of the class uh, with different names and ages. And that will make sense once we do it. So we'll go ahead and get started. First of all, we need the class, um, uh, we'll call it person, and we'll put our uh, curly braces in there. Next are our instance variables or the data that's associated with a person. The data that's associated with a person is the name and the age, so we're going to do var name and we're going to say that name is a string. It's important that we do that, uh, and I'll show you why in a second. We're not going to give values to name and age right now at this point. Um, because that wouldn't make sense. Uh, every person has a different name and a different age. So when we instantiate or create a new person, we're going to pass in that data. So by default, these are not going to have any value. And uh, so that's why we need to say the type. We need to say the name is a string and age is an int because it can't infer that it's string and int because it doesn't have uh, that information. To create a constructor, constructor uh, takes in the initial values and you know manages them, you use the reserved word in it, and after that it's like a regular function. Name, which is a string, and age, which is an int. Those are the two values that it needs in order to work. We can go ahead and say self.name is equal to name. Self.age is equal to age. So what that does is it takes the name up here, the self.name, Self refers to this class, so it takes this name up here and sets it equal to this name there. Self.age takes that age and sets it equal to that. So if I instantiate or create a new person with the name Pogo and the age 16, it will assign the name here to be Pogo and the age there to be 16. This is a very basic class. Notice that we don't have any getters and setters. Those uh, don't exist in Swift, and honestly, I think it's better that they don't, because uh, it just makes so much more sense to call a variable by its name, not by a proxy, which is a getter. You can control access, you know, get and set to a variable, and you can also um, have special kinds of variables, uh, but that will be a future uh, episode. So let's go ahead and try instantiating a person. So we'll go ahead and say a uh, var, we'll call it me, and we're going to set it equal to, we want to create an instance of person, or a new person. To do this, you use the name of the class, which is person, and then we're going to put in our data. So name pogo, age 16. So you'll see that me is equal to an instance of person, 
where the name is Pogo and the age is 16. And you'll see it says here, name Pogo age 16. So it takes these name and age things and it just puts it in a nice looking output. If I want to access data from here, I simply do me dot, and then it gives me name and age. Those are the two variables, the instance fields that I um, specified. So if I say me dot name, it'll access the name inside of this me, which inside of this person, which is Pogo, because I set it to be Pogo. Likewise, I can print me dot age, and it'll print the age of this particular person, which is 16. It's very important to note that um, if I had two different versions, let's say I have another person named you who is uh, 24. You and me are both separate people. If I print out you.name and I print you.age, you'll see that they're different. Pogo 16, you 24. Those are different outputs. Even though they're both uh, they're both persons, they're both people, they have different values. Just like how if you take two people and stand them next to each other, just because they're both people doesn't mean that they're both the exact same. They're both people, but they are a little bit different. It's the same here. So that is classes. That's how classes work in Swift. That's how you define a class, instantiate a class, and access data about a class. Next, we're going to look at inheritance we're going to create a more specialized version of person called employee. Um, the employee is going to be the same as a person. An employee still has a name and an age, but the extra piece of data is going to be the salary. A person inherently doesn't have a salary, but an employee does have a salary because they work for a company. So um, uh, an employee is, is a person. And thus, it has a name and age, and I could treat an employee as if they're a person. But employees also have extra data. They have that um, salary extra data, which is very important. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to create a class called employee, and I can specify that an employee is a person, or an employee extends from person by using a colon and saying person, kind of like uh, how you do types, name, string. Put our... Um, curly braces. So we've created this class called employee which is currently empty but we're saying that, in, that an employee is a person. What does that mean? It means I can treat an employee like a person. I can say you know every employee is a person but not all, not all people are employees. Some people don't have jobs. I can also say <clears throat> every employee has a name and an age which it takes from person. So I don't need to declare that a second time. Through inheritance, I inherit those values. We're going to go ahead and declare salary, which I'm going to say is a double. It has a decimal place, but it's a number. Um, and it, again, takes name and age automatically. We, of course, need our init, and we are going to take name and age, because we need those, but it's also going to take in salary. So it's going to take in two uh, it's going to take in three values instead of the other two. First, we need to set self.salary is equal to salary. But when we want to set name and age, we need to call the super constructor or the constructor of the super class, the class on top of it. An employee extends from person. So employee is the subclass. Person is the super class. So if we look up at person, we'll see that person is initialized with a name and an age, so we'll go ahead and say super for the super class dot init, where name is the given name and age is the given age. So we initialize our salary right here, but then name and age are handled up above in the super class up here, and then that's going to take the name and age and assign those values. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do a couple of examples. So let's just create someone named Fred, who's an employee, and the data that it needs is a name. It's going to be Fred. He's uh, 30 years old, and his salary is uh, $12. I don't know if that's per hour or what, but his salary is $12. So if we take a look at the output, we'll see it says name equals thread, Fred, age equals 30, salary equals 12. But if you notice, 
the name and age are in a nested uh, curly brace. So you'll see there's curly braces surrounding the entire thing, but there's an extra set around there. The reason why that is is because name and age are taken from person. So it's denoting that it has the name and the age, but they're from the superclass, and then salary is right here. If I want to access this, I can do Fred dot, and you'll see name shows up, as does age, and of course salary. So I can access name and age just like I can from a regular person because it automatically comes down from person. And you'll see it prints out the correct output. So that is how inheritance works in Swift. Not anything terribly mind-blowing. Uh, but again, name and age, which are in person, are accessible from an employee. Even though I don't define them here, it automatically comes down from person into employee. One important thing to note is the super.init call comes after the uh, self-initializations. In Java, you always need to call the super constructor first. In uh, Swift, you need to assign your local variables like salary before the super variables like name and age. So it's the opposite for Swift. That's one important thing. All right, nothing terribly crazy yet. But now we're going to take a look at extensions. Extensions allow you to add things. You can add, you know, fields and functions and, uh, you know, special kinds of variables to classes that already exist, even if you didn't write them. And the way that we're going to demonstrate this is we're going to say that the salary prints out as 12. But let's say that we want to print out the salary in terms of, you know, like dollars. We can say dollar sign 12 instead of just 12. You could, of course, just have a dollar sign, but what if we were to write a function that would put it as a, um, that would turn it into a dollar amount, and perhaps there are other things we would do, like add an extra zero, so it would say 12.00. Um, but that's, of course, optional. So, uh, we could just write a function. We could, first of all, just add a dollar sign in front of it, nice and simple. We could also write a function that takes the integer and then pr uh, returns it with the dollar sign and whatever other formatting there is. But we could also take, or sorry, it's a double. We could also take the double class and we could add a function right into the double class and then all of a sudden that's accessible everywhere. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna create an extension by writing extension and it's an extension of the double class. So I'm going to say double. Now in here, I can add things to the double class. Notice the double class is made by Apple. I didn't make it. I don't have access to it. I didn't even look at the source code. But yet I can still add things to it. And that's pretty cool. Go ahead and write a function called to, um, uh, to money. Perhaps it would be better to rename name that better. It takes no parameters because we're, we're adding this as an extension to double. So we can, you know, use the current instance that we have. And it's going to result in a string. <clears throat> so um, it's just simply going to return uh, the dollar sign. And then it's going to return self. What that's going to do is for the self, it's going to return first a dollar sign, then whatever self is. And since this is inside of a double, it's going to return whatever the current double is. So in the case of 12, it'll be 12. Let's take a look and see exactly how this works. I can now do fred.salary dot, and you can see all the different uh, options that you have, all the different things that uh, Apple gives you, but watch this. To money. Look at that. My to money... Um, function, which I wrote just above it, automatically shows up in double. I didn't edit any source code, I just ex I added an extension to double. And now if we take a look at it, you'll see it prints out $12.0. When it gets to that to money part, it's an extension of double, so all doubles from now on have that to money function. And what it does is it puts a dollar sign, then it gets self which is whatever the double is on which I'm invoking this. In this case, it's the salary, which is 12. So it's the dollar sign and then self, which is 12.0. So it prints out dollar sign 12.0.
So those are extensions. You can add things to pre-existing classes without having to open up the source code or do anything like that. And it's a really powerful uh, feature for a language. It's a very cool feature. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.